We didn't know at the time. We didn't even know who the shooters were. Very difficult to get any type of information from these Colombians. They were very tight-lipped. These are some of the most dangerous women you will ever come across. All powerful, dangerous, and capable of leading organized crime syndicates or gangs, these women meant serious business. Let's watch as the most wanted female cartel leaders get sentenced for their crimes. Number 5. Clara Elena Labyrinth Clara Elena Labyrinth Archuleta, the wife of imprisoned drug lord Hector Beltran Leva, was reportedly planning to retake turf in Acapulco that was once held by her husband's cartel. But she was arrested, cutting short her efforts to revive the Beltran Leva cartel, the infamous trafficking group her husband once led. Mexico's federal police released a statement that said Clara Elena Labyrinth Archuleta was captured in the northern city of Hermosillo. Also known as La Señora, Clara was reportedly organizing an incursion into Acapulco, an area that was once the unquestioned turf of the Beltran Leva cartel. Her name has appeared in dozens of narco banners and messages left around the southern resort city. The city's homicide rate has spiraled, turning Acapulco into Mexico's most dangerous municipality in 2016. La Señora's effort to retake control was backed by an alliance with the growing Jalisco New Generation cartel. When Labyrinth Archuleta was detained, she was allegedly caught with two kilos of cocaine and firearms. Her arrest was widely assumed to be the final nail in the coffin of the once mighty Beltran Leva cartel. Number 4. Sandra Avila Beltran Called the Queen of the Pacific by the media, Sandra Avila Beltran is a leader of the Sinaloa drug cartel in Mexico. She was born into a family of cartel members, possibly third generation, but was careful to never leave behind any evidence of her criminal activities. For years, Avila Beltran operated without drawing police attention, but in 2001, authorities seized a tuna boat carrying nine tons of cocaine that was traced back to Sandra and her lover. A few months later, police suspicions were surmounted when she reported that her teenage son was kidnapped for a $5 million ransom. He was eventually returned safely, but authorities continued to investigate Avila Beltran. She was convicted of money laundering in 2007 and spent about seven years in prison. Yes. Es agobiante. México hay mucha corrupción, pero no es nomás con el narcotráfico. Hay mucha corrupción en cualquier ámbito social, con, en todo. Y vamos a desayunar, Joel y yo, y se bajaron dos personas armadas. Se nos pusieron de frente y empezaron a... Y alcancé a ver a, a, a Joel tirado en la calle, muerto. La persona que me iba siguiendo armada, trató de salir corriendo para que no lo tuviera y lo detienen cuando él trata de salir, es como yo me salvo. Yo culpable no porque nunca le he hecho yo daño a nadie. Remordimiento tampoco porque yo no he hecho nunca mal. According to reports, she charmed investigators into letting her apply makeup before police videotaped her transfer to a women's jail. Number 3. Enadina Aralano Felix A distant relative of Sandra Avila Beltran, Enadina Aralano Felix is considered by the Drug Enforcement Administration to be the world's first female drug lord. As a girl, Enadina wanted to become the queen of a carnival in Mazatlan, but because of her family's drug trafficking activities, those dreams were never realized. She began leading the Tijuana cartel after her brother Eduardo Aralano Felix was arrested in 2008. Previously, she worked for the cartel behind the scenes as a money launderer, which she had done to some degree since she graduated with a bachelor's degree in accounting from a private university in Guadalajara. Now known as the boss, the godmother, and the narco mother, Enadina Arellano Felix has managed to survive the fall of her brothers and the widespread takedowns of cartel bosses in Mexico. Number 2. Luz Irene Fallardo Campos A female cartel boss known as La Doña has been sentenced to 22 years in prison in the U.S. after her two sons passed in slayings that could have been a warning not to cooperate with U.S. prosecutors. Luz Irene Fallardo Campos was also referred to as La Comadre and La Madrina, words denoting a big female boss. Some of her collaborators also called her Yenka, the name she stamped into some of the cocaine packages that were sent off to the U.S. Fallardo Campos received her sentence after running an international drug trafficking network along with her adult sons. They obtained their cocaine in Colombia and imported precursor chemicals to Mexico. She bribed law enforcement officials in Mexico and Colombia in order to use an international airport to import cocaine. They sent off cocaine and meth to the U.S., according to prosecutors. She was sentenced in the U.S. District Court for the District of Colombia for her role in a conspiracy to transport thousands of kilograms of cocaine and dozens of pounds of methamphetamine into the U.S.
She was convicted of conspiracy to distribute 5 kilograms or more of cocaine and to manufacture and distribute 500 grams or more of methamphetamine in Mexico, Colombia, Honduras, as well as other places, while being aware that the substances would make their way to the U.S. Number 1. Griselda Blanco That's when Griselda Blanco emerged. She was the largest cocaine importer of the, at the time. Homicidal maniacs that we've ever encountered. In Miami, that she really begins to emerge as this female Al Capone. Griselda Blanco Restrepo, known as the Black Widow and the Cocaine Godmother, was a Colombian drug lord of the Medellin cartel and a pioneer in the Miami-based cocaine drug trade and underworld during the 1950s all the way to the early 2000s. It has been estimated that she was responsible for up to 200 slayings while transporting cocaine from Colombia to New York, Miami, and Southern California. Wild West show down here, and that was really sort of exhibit A, the Dadeland murders. Miami saw dramatic changes in the homicide rate. Cocaine was being imported by the ton, by boat, by plane, in cargo. It didn't take long for Blanco to begin living a life of crime. Blanco's former lover, Charles Cosby, recounted that at the age of 11. Blanco allegedly kidnapped, attempted to ransom, and eventually shot a child from an upscale flatland neighborhood near her own neighborhood. Blanco had become a pickpocket before she even turned 13. To escape the physical assaults from her mother's boyfriend, Blanco ran away from home at the age of 16 and resorted to looting in Medellin until the age of 20. Blanco was a major figure in the history of the drug trade from Colombia to Miami, New York, and California. In the mid-1970s, Blanco and her second husband, Alberto Bravo, immigrated to the U.S., settling in Queens, New York. They established a sizable cocaine business there on a massive scale. Their violence created an atmosphere of lawlessness, particularly in Miami, that broke out into a full-on drug war known as the Cocaine Cowboy Wars. Something that we had never seen or heard of here in South Florida, the war wagon that was covered with bulletproof vests to make it almost like an armored vehicle. Police officers were still using six-shot revolvers, and these guys had Uzi submachine guns. The police department itself were not prepared. In 1975, Blanco was indicted on federal drug conspiracy charges, along with 30 of her subordinates. She fled to Colombia before she could be arrested, but returned to the U.S., settling in Miami in the late 1970s. In 1985, she was arrested by DEA agents in her home and held without bail. After her trial, Blanca was sentenced to more than a decade in jail. While in prison, she continued to effectively run her cocaine business. Still, almost 20 years later, she was released from prison and deported to Colombia, where she passed in a drive-by shooting in 2012. That's all for today's video. See you next time.